Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn on your post notifications so you do get notified. So that way you can join the Emma Viz clan. And if you're not new, welcome back. So in today's video, I am going to be making meatloaf. I haven't done a food vlog in quite some time. And I was like, you know what, why not do meatloaf? So I'm going to show you what you need. I'm going to show you the steps of what needs to be done. And then I will show you the finished product at the end. So let's get started. Okay, so for starters, you're going to need a meatloaf pan or also a, this can even be called a banana bread pan. You're going to need a big bowl. You're going to need two pounds of hamburger meat and onion. Don't judge, I ran out of baggies. A bell pepper, tomato, and two eggs. Also, you're going to need either breadcrumbs or crackers. It's really your preference. Oh, so. and of course, you're going to need onion powder, garlic powder, salt, well, pepper and salt. Oh my God, I'm backwards. But yeah, you're also gonna need some spices. I already took my rings off because I cannot stand having my rings on when I do this. So I already washed my tomatoes and bell peppers. Or bell pepper, I said bell peppers, like if it's multiple. So you're basically just gonna chop everything up. You're gonna take out the inside of the bell pepper because you don't need that. And dump that in the sink. There we go. I have a trash bag right here so I can just throw everything in there. Now I don't know the proper way to cut bell peppers. I just cut them however I think is gonna work I really don't know so you're basically gonna chop them up into little squares so right now I'm just gonna slice them like this so I can cut them into little squares and I cut mine um, bell peppers onions and tomatoes super tiny because my daughter is a very picky eater and this is basically the only way she doesn't know what's in there because the smaller you chop it the more it dissolves into the meat so that's why I have to cut it super tiny. But if you want big chunks, you can do big chunks. If you want it smaller, you can do it smaller. If you even have, um, what is it called? A purator, I believe it is. A food processor, I think that's what it is. You can even use that to chop up um, all the veggies for this to be super tiny. And then for now, I'm going to push them aside. I'm not done chopping them up. I will chop them up a little bit more. But for now, I'm just going to leave them that way. Break all this off. Oh, also one thing I forgot you're gonna need is ketchup. We like ours, our meatloaf with ketchup, but we don't use that until the very end. So that you really don't need right now, but I did need to remind myself that we do need ketchup. And then you're just gonna chop everything up as fine as you want. Like I said, if you want them chunky, you can leave them chunky. I have to chop them up tiny because I'm kind of picky myself and I don't really like the crunch that comes with the meatloaf. It's kind of grosses me out, so I gotta chop it up very small. Okay, and then now we're gonna move on to the tomato. Damn, I cut it fucked up. I fucked it up. Oh well. It's not gonna hurt anybody. <sighs> okay, there we go. Got rid of it. So now we're gonna do the same thing. Cut this in little squares, or as tiny, as big as you want, tiny as you want. I'm gonna cut these pretty small too. But the other reason why I like cutting them smaller, I feel like the flavor just gets better in there. Like everything just dissolves better. So that's why I like to do that as well. Well, that didn't even have a messed up piece. Cut that off. Then now we're just gonna cut it. It doesn't, I don't really care how you cut it. I'm just gonna chop it up however. 
just to get it started. And I may not even use all this tomato because this is actually a really big tomato. So I might just actually use half for the meatloaf. I think I'm gonna use just a couple more slices. I'm gonna put these up, save these for another day. Cause I feel like it's too much tomato. Okay, and that's basically how I like my tomatoes where they're like already really, really chopped up and we're like, they're like starting to get super juicy because all the juices are coming out because I chopped it so tiny. That's how I like my veggies. And now I'm gonna get a piece of onion. The onion I would go easy on because you never know how strong the onion is. So I'm gonna use probably about that much because like I said, I'm not really an onion fan, so use about that much and then we're just gonna make sure we chop it up really really fine as well like the tomato and the bell pepper this is how my veggies look after I'm done I like them really really chopped up oops spilled yeah that's how I like mine so now that we're done with that we're gonna go ahead and add the meat in here and get started First, I'm gonna dump this in there and then I'm gonna wash my hands. Dump that in there. Okay, so I washed my hands real quick because I touched the pack. So the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and basically punch hamburger meat. Go ahead and get it broken up. Basically, you're just gonna push the meat. Oh my god, it's freezing. <laughs> you can go ahead and add all your ingredients in there put everything in there it looks like a lot right now but once you mix everything together it doesn't look like that it's just right now it does and then you're gonna work it in squeeze it however basically like if you were kneading dough that's how you kind of work the hamburger meat right now oh this shit's cold all right, so once you're done mixing that together, you're gonna add one egg. You could either mix them on the side, like if you're gonna do scrambled eggs, or you could just throw them in here all together. I just put it in the bowl and mix. I like to do one at a time because I feel like it comes together easier versus putting them both in there. So I'll do it this way, and then I'll add the other one once this one is mixed in properly. Add the other egg to the meatloaf. Oh my god, the only thing about this is so messy. You can just break the yolk a little bit and then continue to mix. And then once I have all this mixed in, I will add the spices that we need. So now that that's mixed in, I'm gonna add the spices and then I will add the crackers. Let me get more this way. So we're gonna add some garlic powder. Not too much, but enough, because remember, it's a lot of meat. A tiny bit of onion. We're going to add some pepper. I like to add quite a bit. And then also now we're going to add salt. And the only thing that sucks about this, you got to eyeball it because you can't taste it, of course, because it's raw meat. So you just basically spice it how you think it's enough if that makes sense we'll mix it around some more and then we'll add the crackers okay so now i'm gonna grab just a few right now crumble them up and this helps them this the crackers help the meatloaf stick together because the egg can actually break it apart so by you adding the crackers it helps everything come together that's probably all I'm gonna need. I might need a couple more, I'm not really sure. I gotta see. 
and try to break them as small as you can. Although it doesn't really matter because they dissolve into the meat and you don't really know that they're there once the meat is cooked. But I just like to cut them, break them pretty small. Might need a couple more. It's still a little on the moist side. I'm gonna grab two more crackers and break that up. and then do the same thing. And then this is what it should look like once it's done. Looks kind of weird, I know, but trust me, it is delicious. So now we're gonna place that in here and we'll just dump it into the cookie sheet. And then you'll just press it all around to make sure all the corners get filled with the, with the hamburger meat. Just like that, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and then I will be right back. Once we're done placing the meatloaf into the pan, we're gonna go ahead and get some foil. Once we are done putting the foil on our meatloaf pan, we're going to place it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. It cooks in about an hour to an hour and a half, but I stop it at 45 because I like to place ketchup on it. So I'm gonna put this in the oven real quick. Now that our meatloaf is in the oven, I'm gonna get started on my potatoes and these are gonna be for homemade mashed potatoes because we love having homemade mashed potatoes on the side. So while that's in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on these and get them all ready to go. Oh my God, the last time I did this, I cut myself like right here. Yeah, that was from peeling potatoes. So I got a little cocky thinking I was chingona going hella fast and there went a piece of my skin. I was like, great, Emma, you're so smart. So yeah, so I'm gonna peel these and then I chop them up in half into like little squares so it doesn't take too long for them to cook. Because I figured if I'm gonna show you what we're doing for dinner, I might as well show you what we're gonna have on the side as well. Once that is all cut up, we're gonna throw this all in the trash. Then now we're just gonna cut them up. I cut them kind of small, but not too small, kind of. And then I'll cut them in half again, because I feel like it makes the the mashed potatoes taste like so much better because they cook really, really good this way. Cut them really small. And these I'll just cut into fours. Same thing with this one. Now I'm gonna wash them off real quick because they're dirty and then I'm gonna put them into a pot of boiling water. Wash them off since they are dirty still. I like to wash them after I peel them. I just put the potatoes in the water. Now the only thing is, I don't know if you're supposed to put the potatoes in once the water is already boiling or am I supposed to do it before? I don't know. I just put them in before like it all and they just boil together because I don't fucking know. So I just took it out of the oven. It shrunk a little bit. So now I'm going to put some ketchup on it and then I'm going to stick it back in the oven for about 30 more minutes. But I just put ketchup on it like that because we like ours with ketchup. Oh my god, the baby's crying. <laughs> And then we're just gonna spread the ketchup evenly around, just like that. We'll put more once it's done. And I'm gonna put it in the oven without the foil for like I said, another 30 minutes. 